So, Scar, you're one of our experts on trade here and also one of the co-chairs of the Green Group in the Parliament. So I thought we could chat a little bit about what's happening with trade policy. And you'll know that there's been a great deal of concern in the UK about the TTIP trade deal. I mean, my feeling is the Greens were really instrumental in stopping that trade deal. And, uh, you know, I, th I don't think we want to rest on our laurels, but we want to say we were there at the beginning, we were fighting TTIP. It has now at least stalled, possibly not died altogether. But where do you think we are with the politics of trade? I think it was really, really good that we had this European-wide movement against TTIP and CETA and all the rest. And uh, that was really one of, I think, the first times that we really had a proper Euro European debate because very often, you know, you have con topics that are big in one country but really not at all visible in the other country. But mm -hmm. with TTIP, it's really been a cross-European movement and that, that's been very, very good. I indeed wouldn't less rest on our laurels because um, now we see that Trump is saying, oh, maybe we do some TTIP and also the Commission is saying, oh, maybe it's not entirely dead. So really, we have to be on our toes and be very watchful about what's happening next. But of course, we also need to um, change our complete trade policy. And for that, it would have been a good occasion when the Commission was just now publishing their reflection paper on globalization. But unfortunately, they really missed that occasion and, and, and fighting for or like changing their mind or something on trade policy. Because what we as Greens think is that trade can only work if it's fair for both the people inside Europe or inside the country and as well fair for uh, the people in the neighboring or the partner country else it doesn't work yeah, else not fair sure. trade. Yeah I think it's interesting I mean during the Brexit debate in the UK there was a lot of focus on globalization I would say maybe it wasn't at the forefront of what people were talking about but the consequences of globalization whether that was people moving more or you know the power of corporations or the fact that their wages hadn't increased because there was profiteering going on by big companies as I see it yeah. and it's trade that gives them the power to do that really so I think a lot of what was happening there and a lot of the crises we see politically whether we think about the UK or what's happening in the US as well mm. globalization kind of lies behind that but my sense is that as you say, the Commission and the sort of mainstream politicians at the moment are not really tackling that. They're trying to put sticking plasters over what is a fundamental problem. And, and the problem is really the way the trade system works and the fact that we need to democratise that trade system and give citizens more power relative to the corporations. Absolutely. At least we see that the Commission is starting to understand, oh, there is a problem, we need to talk about that. So that's already good. Now the question is what consequences do they draw out of it and that's the next thing to do. But I also find it very interesting that uh, especially in the Brexit context like all the Brexiteers are now saying oh but we need to have more trade agreements with the US with everyone else and I'm not sure it's going to be better trade agreements. No. So that's very interesting how this argumentation goes but I think we really need to rein in, we need to regulate uh, globalization because you know people getting closer to each other can be a very beneficial thing. But if a globalization is one only about uh, who has the most money, who can evade the most taxes, you know, who's the biggest corporation in order to benefit most from trade, then that doesn't work. And we need to do get serious on social rights, fighting tax evasion, fighting climate change and all the rest. So for that, we really need some strong proposals on the table. No, absolutely. And as you say now with Brexit, you know, our government's saying it's going to have these amazing trade deals and the places they've been are places like Saudi Arabia and Turkey and even the Philippines, you know, and thinking about our future lying with these rather nasty authoritarian regimes, actually. And I mean, what I see there is this risk of a race to the bottom, as you say, on all the standards that the European Union has protected. But is there some way in which if we keep trade going with the EU, then they will be able to constrain the worst aspects of what might happen after Brexit? Or is it just a complete free for all now? It could be that we could manage to restrain uh, some of the of the social and otherwise dumping. Um, because with a trade agreement you also set the rules, at least for the things you trade, mm -hmm. and that could be used for increasing standards, making sure they're not in a free fall. Unfortunately what we've seen so far in trade agreements is that it lowers standards, but mm -hmm. in theory the other thing would absolutely be possible to make higher standards, social, ecological, everything standards, so that's what we should aim for, for a trade policy that's really beneficial for people and to increase the standards. Okay, and also I suppose making sure that um, you know, citizens have an influence over what happens with trade deals Absolutely. and making sure that we can see what's happening inside the trade deals and they don't happen behind closed doors. Absolutely, it's been a big problem here that we uh, had stock, uh, um, access to some documents but we weren't able to talk about the documents and then citizens didn't have any access to any knowledge about that and uh, that's a completely weird situation because I mean you can't have debates on the basis of things you can't talk about. So do you think I'll be able to know more about what happens with the UK free trade deal through the European side? 
side or through the British side, or are they both going to hide everything from the citizens? At least on the European Union side, we have fought a lot for more transparency. Mm -hmm. You know, even though the successes haven't been great, they have been there. So I I hope that we can have at least some sort of access for trade agreements, and no matter what. Um, trade deals we're currently in, so especially for the Brexit. I mean, this is a super big issue for all EU citizens, still EU citizens, so, um, <laughs> so absolutely, absolutely, I think it needs to be totally transparent. Okay, brilliant. Okay, thanks very much for your time, and I hope we get the right results as we go through these trade negotiations in future. Yes, thank you, Molly, thank and you. good luck for Bristol. Thank you.